Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great and it's been a long time since I did the last video and uh, once again uh, that happened because I had some uh, assignments at my university but I was also working uh, in my free time with uh, some uh, audio projects uh, which are not ready yet but they're going to be ready in a few days and there is probably going to be a video on those so stay tuned uh, by subscribing and uh, hitting the like button because it helps me a lot and uh, it actually motivates me to uh, produce more videos for you guys uh, because it's uh, it's been a long time uh, i thought it would be a good idea to get uh, once again in touch by uh, doing a repair video and as you see in front of me i've got uh, an amplifier and actually this amplifier is laying around at my house for quite a long time and uh, I actually found this amplifier inside the recycling bin and I got it because I thought it would be a good idea just to open it and see what's going on inside, how all the things are laid inside and just to have it for parts but I actually thought why not uh, try to see what's the problem and uh, try to fix it so as you see uh, this uh, amplifier is a meds amplifier mecha sound ax4960 that's a stereo integrated amplifier and it has the power buttons you've got speaker selection you've got it has uh, equalization bass and treble selection it has um, some switches here for muting uh, stereo and uh, mono mode and loudness mode it also has uh, multiple inputs for auxiliary phono tuner recording and tape and it has a volume pot here with a pod around the volume pot for balance i tested the amplifier using uh, one speaker that i don't have at the moment and the one channel was working but the other one was not working and it had it, it was actually working but uh, had some strange uh, distortions and so we're gonna uh, open it up we're gonna connect uh, the my phone to the auxiliary input and uh, turn it on and see what's actually the problem on the oscilloscope so because uh, this amplifier doesn't have uh, generic inputs like RCA I had to actually find the schematic for the inputs and uh, try to see which uh, uh, inputs uh, hole in the auxiliary was uh, um, the auxiliary in left and right so I connected the uh, amplifier to the auxiliary to the one channel and I'm gonna use the mono mode uh, so I can have one channel in uh, both amplifier channels so we're gonna open it up and uh, check uh, uh, the outputs with the oscilloscope I have connected the oscilloscope probes uh, into the outputs of the amplifier and uh, I'm feeding uh, with my phone a uh, sine wave uh, through the auxiliary input of the amplifier and I turn it on and as you see at the oscilloscope the channel above is the left channel that uh, as you see has a very nice waveform but uh, the bottom one which is the right one has is doing some uh, it has it definitely has the problem and as you see here uh, the sound wave is uh, is not uh, fine and as i increase the volume uh, is getting uh, worse as you see i'm gonna turn the bar balance to the right to the right uh, to the left uh, channel and as you see we've got a very nice uh, sine wave and as I'm gonna I'm gonna trigger really quick and as you see the sine wave looks pretty fine to me at the max input but if I turn the balance to the right channel uh, and I increase so, the volume uh, before we uh, try to search for stuff and uh, start uh, measuring every single component uh, the first thing that I want to do is uh, uh, is to just uh, check for simple voltages like the output voltages uh, if we've got uh, anything wrong with the Darlington pairs anything shorted 
So I'm going to check first the outputs, but before we uh, check the outputs, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's quickly check the schematic. Heading over to the schematic, uh, we can see that uh, we've got some uh, ICs here that uh, are dedicated uh, amplification stages for the phono preamp, but all the other outputs are going to the selection switch here and from the selection switch are going uh, into uh, this side here that uh, it acts as some kind of filter uh, right here and it goes into the amplifier which is actually that, uh, that of the left channel, that whole uh, thing here and uh, probably the right channel. As you see uh, at the input stage we've got uh, a differential pair with uh, active loads and uh, some resistors here. Uh, we've got the uh, voltage amplification stage that, uh, that is taking the uh, drop from that side here and this one is active loaded too as you see we've got a current source here and actually uh, the output uh, is got from this capacitor here into that uh, IC201 SK STK0050 uh, which if you actually search is uh, a Darlington power pack uh, that uh, has Darlington pairs here uh, drivers for uh, the output uh, transistors and some kind of uh, uh, VBE multiplier here with uh, a transistor and some resistors and that is contained into an IC so as I said uh, in the uh, as I previously said, uh, before we do any measurements around, we need to actually check uh, where the uh, actually the power is coming from, and it's it's likely uh, the reason that causes the problem because uh, these uh, components uh, are getting pretty warm and uh, um, uh, they can fail. So we're gonna check this area here first uh, with the output resistors and um, check also the IC if we've got any shorts using uh, this pin out here and we should actually have uh, zero here uh, at the output almost zero and uh, no strange shorts here and uh, uh, we're also gonna check for the voltages on uh, this output stage so let's head over to the webcam and uh, uh, do the measurements so here we have the right channel uh, as you see here we've got uh, the input side here and we've got the Darlington power pack uh, with the output resistors and by doing a simple visual inspection I can't see anything strange, uh, anything strange at the input stage uh, everything seems fine and same as the um, uh, left uh, channel uh, but uh, one uh, uh, tip that I want to mention is that if the one channel is working and the other uh, doesn't work uh, if uh, you don't have the schematic you can actually do uh, simple measurements across the components and compare them to the uh, with the working channel and uh, try not to try to find the problem like that like comparing uh, the values and the voltages. So let's go at the uh, Darlington power pack and uh, if we check uh, if we check the data sheet uh, the input voltage uh, comes from uh, uh, the ninth pin and the uh, output the input voltage uh, plus and minus is coming from the 9 and the 2 pin and uh, if uh, we have uh, a short across those uh, across those resistors uh, we are going to see uh, between the uh, input sides a pretty small uh, resistance so let's uh, uh, try and uh, check uh, 9 and 2 uh, uh, pins so we are measuring uh, OL open uh, circuit and if we check in diode mode between 2 and uh, 2 and 6 pin let's see we get uh, 
a voltage drop and we actually don't have uh, the outputs, uh, the voltage inputs uh, shorted uh, in the Darlington uh, power pack. So let's uh, turn on uh, the amplifier and uh, quickly check for voltages. You need uh, to be careful when you test for voltages and we should have 89 volts well, which is actually fine because it's uh, the voltage between plus and minus and uh, the ground so we don't have uh, any the problem with output that. side in this uh, resistor uh, we should have uh, zero volts let's check oh we don't have zero volts this one oh, this is minus 10 volts okay this is not this is not uh, fine for sure uh, we should have a small drop between those two which we actually don't have we've got 10 volts of drop here which is actually pretty a lot comparing it uh, with the resistance here that we've got uh, two uh, series resistances uh, point, uh, 0.47 as I see here so let's turn off the amplifier and uh, check the turn resistance on the Let's switch to resistance. We should have like point, point something resistance here. Yeah, we have. We have on the one side like 0 0.58. Yep. And the other one, let's see. Oh, the other one is zero, which is actually fine. So uh, this um, uh, two resistor series, the three pin device is probably broken. And as I see here, I see a blob, a blob of solder here. So uh, probably this is causing the problem because uh, uh, actually when one resistor is blown, uh, the other one uh, is uh, uh, doing all the work and we actually don't have the right signal at the output because only the one transistor is uh, working at the output and we've got uh, uh, that distortion that uh, we saw on the oscilloscope. I'm gonna try to remove this and I'm gonna try to find uh, some resistors to uh, replace this. So let's unplug the amplifier and uh, uh, disassemble it and get the board out and uh, see uh, what we can fix. In the start uh, I thought it would be a pain in the ass to get the board out because it had so many screws, it had layers of metal but as I was uh, uh, removing the plates here I saw this plate uh, that actually covers the whole board uh, beneath, beneath it and it actually gives you full access under the board so this is very handy so if I check back at the output uh, the the right channel that uh, was burned is probably those those three pins right here. So we're gonna uh, turn on the the soldering iron and, and uh, remove this uh, device here and try to see if I have any replacements uh, 0.4 uh, 0.4 uh, ohm resistors. Uh, the idea that I have is to just cut this resistor and. Uh, push the wires from the other side so let's try to cut so there we go I removed the device as you see here the board uh, looks pretty fine I have some shorts here that there are strains but uh, we're gonna f uh, we're gonna figure this out too we're gonna clean it oh that actually melts pretty easy so oh, there we go there we go actually has a lot of <laughs> yep the last one is removed so let's clean with the braid I've got these holes cleaned up here there we go this is cleaned five up five pins let's check we've got five pins here and these two are connected so we, it was fine so unfortunately OBS uh, decided not to work and I was recording the whole process of uh, uh, changing the resistors uh, 
uh, I actually found some resistors 0.47 resistors that I had uh, and the thing I did I open up the hole so I can fit uh, two of them at the common hole and I actually desoldered and uh, wicked the holes and cleaned the pads and I added the new resistors as I'm gonna show you right now I actually changed the resistors these two resistors and now we've got uh, the right resistors as the common component here and I'm so sorry for that OBS crust so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, to power up the amplifier uh, and uh, check the outputs again with the uh, signal input and see if anything changed so if it didn't change we probably have another problem somewhere else but we're gonna be careful so we don't burn up this uh, uh, these uh, resistors here back like at the start we are feeding the sound wave with the phone at the input and i have uh, uh, the probes at the outputs of the uh, uh, of the darlington pairs so let's power up i've got the volume turned all the way down so we don't have any pops so oh look at that now we've got a nice signal, the bottom is nice, which is actually the, the, uh, the channel that we repaired. So let's, let's see here what offsets we have. Oh, something popped. 